for chapter one. Our first one is to define operations management. Um, we are gonna, we're going to do that on the next slide, and we will also discuss uh, production. Then we will explain the distinction between goods and services. We will explain the difference between production and productivity. We'll compute single-factor and multi-factor productivity. And then we will identify the critical variables in enhancing productivity. Lastly, we will go over the historical evolution of operations and supply chain management. So those are our learning objectives for Chapter 1. All right, so what is operations management? Well, operations management is the set of activities that creates value in the form of goods and services by transforming inputs into outputs. So you can see the word inputs there was left blank. That's for you to fill in as we do these slides together. So transforming inputs into outputs, that's really uh, what production is. It's the creation of goods and services and the production activities that go uh, into an organization are referred to as operations. So operations management is the set of activities we do to monitor that process, transforming those inputs into outputs. In operations, we're producing something, and that producing of something can be a good or it can be a service. An example of goods would be uh, my iPhone, right? So here's my iPhone. There are tons of raw materials that go into this product, this good, resistors, printed circuit boards, uh, the glass screen. And so Apple is taking all of those raw materials, they're putting them all together, they're taking all those inputs, putting value into it, and it becomes the output, which is your iPhone. For services, you're also taking various inputs, transforming those inputs into some kind of an output. So an example of a service could be this course, right? I've spent hundreds of hours putting the materials together, whether it's the PowerPoint slides, the practice problems, the quizzes, the exams, and even these lecture recordings. Those are all inputs that I take, and the output is the finished product, which you are watching right now. So whether it's a good or a service, in operations, we're producing something, we're, we're putting value into it, and tr we're transforming it from an input into an output. So the principles of operations management help us to understand the view of a business enterprise as a total system in, in which all the activities are coordinated, not only vertically throughout the organization, but also horizontally across multiple functions. So why do we study operations management? Well, um, besides it just being uh, a required uh, course material at San Diego State University, um, it's, it's relevant to understand how the three major functions in an organization work together. By now, many of you have taken some finance classes and marketing classes, uh, and operations is one of the key functions in an organization, and they've all got to work together. You know, if marketing, right, they generate demand and they find customers. Uh, they understand what value the customer wants. And nothing can happen until we have those sales. Well, in productions and operations, we take whatever is sold and made, and we create that product or service, and we deliver it to the customers. We're creating the value or the product or service that our customers want. We transform those inputs into outputs. So the operations team and the marketing team have to be aligned with designing products and services that meet our customer expectations. It doesn't do any good if marketing designs a product or a service and then operations builds something that does not meet those expectations. So they have to communicate closely together to make sure that the products and services are what our customers want. Same thing for finance. Finance tracks how well the organization is doing. They pay the bills, they collect money, and they also fund the operation. So if we believe that there's going to be a dramatic increase in sales or a dramatic decrease, Finance needs to be aware so that they can have the cash available if we're going to be buying extra inventory or hiring extra people. So finance is very much in line with operations as well. The other major reason why we study operations management is that it's a huge expense to an organization. Um, it, it can be anywhere from 60 to 70 to 80 percent of funding an operation and the rest is all uh, that's left for profit. So it's a huge expense to take those inputs and transform them into an output. Cost of goods sold is a significant portion of what companies are acquiring and spending um, to take and transform that into the finished good. And so that's why people like me um, have careers in supply chain and operations management, because it's such a huge impact to the company profitability. The textbook gives an example, and I, I believe they say something along the lines of, would you rather increase sales by 30 percent 
or decrease your costs by 30%. And if you think about that, most people would say, oh, let's increase our sales by 30%. That sounds good. And although that is great, don't get me wrong, we, we do want to increase sales by 30%. The company will be more profitable with a reduction in cost of goods sold by 30% versus an increase in sales by 30%. The reason being, if you increase your sales, you by default are increasing your cost of goods sold and you're gonna pay taxes on the revenue of that increase in 30%. You have to hire more people, you have to buy more inventory. So although it's good to grow your revenue by 30%, it's even better to cut your costs by 30% if you want to increase profitability. And frankly, it's easier to cut costs by 30% than it is to grow revenue by 30% because if you were gonna grow revenue by 30%, you would have already done it. So those are why we study, that's why we study operations management because operations, marketing, and finance must be all aligned with each other and it's a huge expense to the organization. So um, though those three functions, through those three functions, marketing, operations, and finance, uh, we're creating value for our customers. But firms rarely create all of that value on their own. Instead, we rely heavily on the supply chain to provide us with a lot of the inputs that we use to go into making our outputs. So whether it's raw materials or financial services, whatever it may be, we are heavily reliant on our supply chain. So this course, although we're only going to cover supply chain specifically in chapter 11, one of the many chapters we're going to cover, operations and supply chain go hand in hand together. You can't have an operations without the supply chain supporting it. Well, the supply chain is a global network of organizations and activities that supplies a firm with goods and services. Members of that supply chain collaborate to achieve high levels of customer satisfaction, efficiency, and competitive advantage. In general, it starts with the provider of basic raw materials and continues all the way down to the final customer at the retail store. We are used to being that final customer. We're used to seeing products on the shelves. Most people have never really thought about how those products get to us. Not only all the raw materials that goes into making them, but also the task of, of transforming those inputs into outputs and getting those goods ready for us to buy. I will say over the course of the last few years, because we've had the global coronavirus pandemic, that supply chain has absolutely been in the news a lot more often. People are starting to see how delicate our supply chains are because products are not on the shelves like we have enjoyed for decades. Um, whether it's a toilet paper shortage or a car shortage or a lumber shortage, whatever it may be, we are seeing how delicate our supply chains are and how um, the domino effect, if something goes wrong within that supply chain, how it affects other industries as well. So as a supply chain professional, uh, one of the, um, although it was an unintended consequence of, of the, the coronavirus pandemic, um, people now have a major spotlight on supply chain and how critical it is to the organization for, for our success and, and not just having products on the shelves, but also um, being able to reduce those expenses as well. So supply chain is absolutely a critical function within operations management. So you can see there's uh, on the screen, there is an example of what the supply chain for a bottle of Coke looks like, right? It starts with the beet or sugarcane farmer, then it goes to the syrup producer, then it goes to a distributor or a retailer, and every single one of them is taking an input and transforming it into an output. And the reason why we call it a the supply chain is because there is a chain throughout every one of these organizations. You see Coke as your final product but there have been numerous other stakeholders within that supply chain that have touched that product to make it what it is. Same thing for your iPhone or any other product that you use. These supply chains can be ridiculously ex um, extensive, very long. There can be 10 to 20 different suppliers in a supply chain to get that product to you in its finished good state. So supply chains are critical to operational success. And as we've been seeing um, over the last couple of years, they are also very delicate too. Okay, there's four basic operations management functions. That is planning, organizing, directing, and controlling. So planning, a significant amount of time is involved in selecting the goods and services that an organization offers and designing those services and products to meet our potential customer requirements. So, you know, what are our goals? What do we want to create? Um, and what do we want to have available? So that's planning. Uh, it takes a lot of, lot of time 
uh, up front um, as one of our operations management functions. Next is organizing. That's the process of bringing together the resources, the people, the material, the equipment, the technology um, necessary to perform all of our planned activities. So do we have our processes and our systems in place to create and deliver our goods and services? Next is directing. This is staffing and leading. This is the process of turning those plans into realities by assigning specific tasks and responsibilities to our employees, motivating them, coordinating the efforts. This is really what operations managers do on a day-to-day -day basis. This is turning our plans into realities and coordinating those tasks. And then last is controlling. This is evaluating performance and applying corrective measures to ensure that plans are achieved. This is learning from our mistakes, implementing best practices, and improving our operations in the long run, uh, making sure that everything is going as planned. One thing to keep in mind about these four different basic uh, operation management functions is that planning and organizing are typically very strategic. They, are, they look a little further out in the future, and directing and controlling are a little bit more tactical and a little bit more day-to-day -day than planning and organizing. So along those lines, we've got our, our three operations management decisions, and those decisions are strategic, tactical, and operational. Strategic decisions are long-term. Uh, they concern the determination of broad policies and plans for using the resources of a company to best support its long-term competitive strategy. So strategic decisions are long-term, and they look at our competitive strategy. Examples of that could be, uh, where do we want to put a facility? You know, do we want to start building products in Europe or in China uh, or uh, some other geographic location? Those decisions are not made lightly and they are not made overnight. So that is a strategic decision that helps to um, support our operations. Tactical decisions primarily address how to effectively manage capacity, inventory, and schedules with the, within the constraints of the previously made strategic decisions. So this would be, you know, management of personnel, inventory planning and control, master scheduling, those would be examples of tactical decisions that are made within an operation. And then last are the operations decisions. These are narrow and shorter term by comparison and act under the operation constraints set up by the strategic and tactical decisions. So this is our day-to-day -day decisions, you know, scheduling over time. Do we want to ship something overnight? Do we have employees with the flu and then we need to, uh, you know, uh, either work overtime, whatever it may be, um, those are more of our, our operational decisions and uh, our day-to-day. -day. So this won't be on your exam or your quiz or anything, but strategic decisions are typically done by executives in the organization. We might look five to ten years out, so strategic planning. Tactical decisions are things where we look maybe a year or so out, looking at master schedules, creating goals. You know, this is more of your, your mid-level um, whether it's directors or, or managers in the organization. And then our operations decisions are a little bit more narrow and short term. These might look out one day, one week, maybe a month, because they're more tactical, uh, just keeping the operations going. Okay, so that is, an, that is a, a high level overview of what operations management is. Um, the book goes over the 10 critical operations management decisions to be made that the design of goods and services, managing quality, process strategy, location strategy, I won't go down the list of all of them, but there are 10 critical operations management decisions that, that uh, we do in the operations roles. Um, in this course, BA 360, we are gonna cover about uh, 10 of them, maybe 11 of them. Um, we're not gonna have time to cover all of the, the critical operations management decisions um, because in this book, there are 17 different chapters. So. We're going to go over, you know, goods and services and productivity in chapter one. We're going to talk about managing quality in chapter six. We're going to go over process strategy in chapter seven and then supply chain management chapter 11 and then inventory MRP and JIT. Those are chapters 12, 14 and 16. So we're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, we're going to cover a lot of topics and a lot of content in this course. And um, if you have either spare time or an interest, there are other chapters which we are not going to cover. Uh, but they are beneficial as well if you plan to have a career in operations management. Uh, specifically, Chapter 8, if you're a hotel and tourism major, uh, location strategy it would be a good one for you to understand. And if you're an entrepreneurship or human resources uh, major, 
uh, then uh, chapter uh, 10 would be great for you because uh, it talks about human resources and job design. So lots of good content in this textbook. Uh, it's, a, it's a good textbook. Uh, there's lots of good content in there. And so these are some of the chapters that we will cover um, and some of the chapters that we will not cover.